our math stat class can be broken down into three main topics. We had point estimation, interval estimation, and hypothesis testing. So we've already covered point estimation and interval estimation, and now we're finally getting into this last topic of hypothesis testing. All right, so we're going to start off by using hypothesis testing to think about one mean. So a few important terms that we should get out of the way. First of all, what is a hypothesis? What is this hypothesis testing stuff? So a hypothesis is just a statement about a population parameter. So if we're doing hypothesis testing for one mean, then we're going to be making hypotheses or statements about this population mean. All right, so there's different kinds of hypotheses. We could have a simple hypothesis or a composite hypothesis. So if we have something like the hypothesis mu equals 10, that's just a simple hypothesis because we're saying the parameter is equal to a single point. Then if we have a composite hypothesis, then we're saying that the parameter is in an interval. So maybe our um, composite hypothesis would be something like mu is greater than 10. All right. So in this first example, we're going to think about just two simple hypotheses. So we have some distribution. It's a normal distribution with unknown mean mu and variance 36. So sigma squared equals 36. And perhaps someone told us that mu is equal either to 50 or 55. So perhaps we set up our hypotheses like the null is the simple hypothesis mu equals 50, and then the alternative is the simple hypothesis mu equals 55. So for some reason, we have reason to believe that mu is equal to 50, but if we have enough evidence, we're going to reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis that mu is equal to 55. All right, so how do we actually decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or not? So we're going to form some kind of rule, and that rule will tell us whether or not to reject the null. So perhaps this is our rule. If the set x1 through xn is in some interval c, we're going to reject the null in favor of the alternative. And if the set x1 through xn is in C prime, then we will not reject the null hypothesis. So what we've done is we've taken our sample space for x1 through xn and partitioned it into two pieces, C and C prime. So C and C prime, the union of them uh, gives us the entire sample space, and these two, C and C prime, do not overlap at all. All right, so we've partitioned our sample space into C and C prime, and then we're saying if x1 through xn lands in C, we will reject the null, and if x1 through xn lands in C prime, we will not reject the null. Okay, so what might C and C prime look like? Well, lots of times we take our sample x1 through xn and create a test statistic. So maybe our test statistic, since we're talking about one mean, um, one po population mean, our test statistic would be the sample mean x bar. So maybe C would be the set of all x1 through xn such that x bar is greater than or equal to 53, and C prime would be the set of all x1 through xn such that x bar is less than 53. So what this is saying is if our sample lands in C, in other words, if we have x bar greater than or equal to 53, we're going to reject the null in favor of the alternative. So that kind of makes sense. What's our null? It's mu equals 50, and our alternative is mu equals 55. So this is saying if our sample mean is big enough, greater than or equal to 53, then we're going to reject the null, mu equals 50, in favor of the alternative, mu equals 55. And then C prime is the set of all x1 through xn such that x bar is um, less than or equal to 53. So what this is saying is if our sample mean is less than 53, then that means we've landed in C prime and we will not reject the null. So if we have a small enough sample mean, then we're going to not reject the null hypothesis that mu equals 50.